Yanis, uh, more austerity measures for Greece. From the news footage, it appears the population doesn't like the plan. So we don't want the financial terrorists, the market fundamentalists, the banker jihadis on Wall Street. We don't want them stinking suicide bankers like Lloyd Blankfein blowing himself up here. In 2008, we um, saw the end of capitalism. It sounds a bit extreme, but I do seriously believe that this is exactly what happened. We don't live under capitalism now. We live under a regime which I call bankruptocracy. It's not the same as bankocracy. It's not ruled by banks. It's ruled by bankrupt banks. It's a very strange regime that we live under, which defies the traditional left versus right arguments of free markets versus uh, collective uh, action or central planning. Now we have a situation where the more uh, you have failed, the more spectacular your inability to generate profits, the more power you have over those who do. Debt laid in Greece finds no buyers and fire sale of national assets. So apparently representatives of the Greek government, while all those protests were going on in the streets of Athens, they were in London at Claridge's Hotel looking to sell off 50 billion euros worth of income producing assets. Up for sale, were 39 airports, 850 ports, railways, motorways, sewage works, a couple of energy companies, banks, defense groups, thousands of acres of land for development, casinos, and Greece's national lottery. Apparently, they found no buyers. How does selling off income-producing assets restore the long-term economic viability of Greece? It doesn't at all. I mean, let me just give you a very brief example. Take the state lottery, the national lottery of Greece. It produces 400 million euros of dividends a year for the Greek state. And they are now going to try to sell it for 900 million. Now this is uh, verging on the criminal negligence. Wait a minute, I'm being sucked into a black hole! <laughs> I wish that I could agree with you that this is a conspiracy by which to loot Greece. It is not. And I say I wish because if it were a conspiracy, it would mean that there would be some rhyme and some reasons and some logic behind what the Europeans and the IMF are doing in Greece. You see, I don't believe there is any logic and I don't believe there is a plan and I don't think there is any uh, overarching objective. Right, because the IMF, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, United Nations, they're running the show now. Barack Obama is just basically tap dancing to the IMF tune, isn't he? Well, as we see, all governments have to. Remember Papandreou in, in Greece, he was elected on a very specific platform of tossing these guys out. Within days, he was you know, swapping the credit default swaps that were worth tens of billions of dollars. He's giving them to buddies and people and secret bankers. Here you have the George Papadreou's government signing off on the memorandum with the IMF, a foreign banking institution, giving them rights above and beyond the Greek constitution. They are going to take Greeks gold, Greece's gold, as part of the debts that they have imposed on Greece. It's the same deal as you just described to me that the Nazis did. They, they, they loaded Greece with a bunch of debt. Then they, they, they raped Greece. Now the IMF has loaded Greece with a, a lot of debt, and they're going to economically rape Greece. They're going to take the gold. They're going to securitize and monetize and trade all the security. So how is this different? And why should they, re why, why not, why respect this memorandum? This is a memorandum is, was cooked up by Papadreou in a, in a, in under, a, a, the, we could only describe it as treasonous. I agree with you. I mean, I, I would never respect the memorandum if I had the choice of not respecting it. You know, it's interesting that despite the crisis, Greece is still buying weapons. They're still spending lots of money on weapons. But isn't this buying of conventional weapons, again, another huge waste of money by Greece? It's worse than that. You're assuming that the Greek government is deciding what to do. It is not. It's being told by Germany what to do. It's quite interesting that while hospitals are having to do without bandages, let alone uh, more sophisticated uh, instruments to fight uh, disease, uh, the De Ministry of Defense is not given the opportunity of cancelling the order for German tanks and submarines. It, it seems like a case really of financial sadism. In other words, uh, there are a number of ways to extricate 
Greece from this problem. One would be, for example, to prosecute the bank, the bankers who fraudulently got Greece into the euro to begin with. The obvious thing to do with Greece is to allow it to default, to face the truth that it's a bankrupt state. Now, of course, the, the people who actually suffer in terms of uh, uh, basic human costs, that is hunger and uh, um, just genuine human hardship, are the people in the deficit countries, Greece being the worst, but the rest are not doing much better in Spain, in Portugal, in Ireland. Um, and uh, this whole process is simply spiraling out of control. Right, and the, uh, the average person in Greece is uh, having their, uh, their minimum wage cut by 20 to 25 percent. Uh, currently, it's 750 euros per month. It'll be cut down to 600 euros per month. So this is just they're scapegoating the average person, right? Just again on the sadism theme, they they somehow are just basically committing kind of a financial genocide. So the whole point of reducing the minimum wage from 700 to 600 euros, I mean, there is no macroeconomic rationale whatsoever involved in this. The only point of doing this is to demonstrate to, to the German members of parliament, in particular of the ruling coalition, that look, the Greeks are bleeding. So let us give them more loans, when of course those loans are not meant for the Greeks, they're meant for the banks. I feel betrayed because they took my life from me and my right to be a human being. So the only way of placating the German members of parliament and the electorate that they represent is by saying to them, look, watch those Greeks suffer, okay? If they suffer sufficiently, then perhaps we should give them some money. In the last few years, we only had obligations and no rights, and that makes me angry. Okay, now, this is interesting. The, uh, the bureaucrats in Brussels have just found another 15 billion euro black hole in Greece, Greek finances. Uh, this seems to be a recurring theme. How many more black holes do you expect to be found in Greek financial universe before it's all over? It really depends on whether Germany is ready to let the Eurozone go. Taking that bailout loan was the equivalent of a collective suicide. National sovereignty is a thing of the past until and unless some new Greek government can simply say no to the bailout loans that are being on offer to the Greek social economy.